Welcome everybody to the Hearthstone Pro-Am tournament brought to you by NVIDIA GeForce. Frodo and uh, joining with me is Aquablad uh, over in the UK. And uh, we've had our first series of the day finished where Ping Ping Ho took out Forsen 3-1. to one. Uh, Even though Forsen tried to use some cool Grim Patron Warrior shenanigans, it seems like uh, everybody is still in the process of learning how to play that deck. Uh, I'm looking forward to see how it will continue to expand the next couple of weeks but in the meantime i still stand by my uh, what i say is i think it's the hardest deck to play right now in hearthstone uh what, what do you think about that previous series nick did you enjoy it yeah it was excellent i mean there's a lot of like you said there's a lot of big decisions for uh Forsen to make to take the direction of the match i mean it's a deck i haven't had a lot of experience myself so it's nice to see it played at quite a high level and get to understand what the deck's capable of especially when you're talking about he could have uh, set up a, a high damage burst utilizing the war song commander spawning more patrons and stuff like that so yeah it was really interesting Right. It's, the deck's super difficult. Like I, I've played a hundred games of it and I still learn something new about it every single time because the matchups are so unique with what you can and can't get away with. Um, it just reminds me of when people were first learning how to play Miracle Rogue. And uh, before Miracle Rogue was like completely mapped out in her terms of in terms of how to play certain things, um, there were so many like small nuances on how you can squeeze out more draws and get a little bit more damage so that way you can weigh them down. Um, that's what people appreciate about the deck. Personally, I think uh, it's a little bit sad that Grim Patron doesn't seem to fit in any other deck other than Warrior. Maybe, um, maybe you know, in like an arena draft deck where you can ping your own Grim Patron to start getting some board control at the cost of a little bit of uh, tempo. But uh, personally, I really love this card. I think it's awesome, and I can't wait to see more of it. Uh, well, we have a great match as well coming up here. We have Life Coach versus Trump. Uh, I believe we have the classes about to come up on screen, and it is Palette. Uh, excuse me, it is Mage. Paladin and Warrior versus Warlock, Paladin, and Mage. Now we have two classes which seem to be appear, but are they the same? What do you think? Oh, the Mages? Oh, 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 and the Paladins. Well, I would say Life Coach's Paladin is probably a bit greedier because he likes that sort of style. He likes to grind your opponent out and uh, then he'll capitalize on having like a really good hand or very good options in his hand. And Trump, like he's been playing Paladin for a long time now. You always see it pop up somewhere on the web. Like Trump's hit legend with this mid pally list and, you know, he's uh, he's done a lot of work with that deck. As, as for the mages, I mean, they could go either way. Like we discussed last time, there's a potential potential for freeze mage there's a potential for tempo mage it's potential for uh, mech mage uh, tempo mage seems to be more of a european deck so maybe life coach might bring that who knows um and the warrior we might see another patron warrior who knows uh, but knowing what uh, life coach's play style like it wouldn't surprise me if it was control uh i'm pretty sure it's the mech warrior he's been brought he brought for like four weeks in a row now maybe even all weeks. oh uh he's been well, i haven't seen a second deck with... in action yet Oh, it's it's pretty fun. I, lo I love when he takes Arcanite Reaper and hits the face. It's awesome. Um, I, I don't know if he's tweaked it at all. It could be one of those things where Life Coach is still in the middle of experimental phase. Because the round of 16 round robin um, in NVIDIA is relatively playing for seeding and not harmful towards your actual comp competition for the finals, uh, he could be in the experimental phase where he's just trying to figure out what's this good against, what's it bad against, is it fit for conquest, um, and, I, and I like that approach. You know, he could bring Mech Mage, he can bring the Super Troll Paladin, and uh, that'd be pretty straightforward. Now, uh, I think Trump really loves Zoo. Back in the day when, when Warlock and Zoo was really popular, Trump would be extremely predictable in bringing that type of deck, um, even though he's played a lot of Handlock, too. Even as recently as yesterday, he played Handlock. So uh, I, I would definitely leave the zoo uh, because i think it's uh, very much close to trump's heart it could be one of those things where also trump's streaming hand locks doesn't want to be so predictable uh and you know he, he tries to mix it up once in a while yeah maybe uh the gossip of his stream gets a life coach and you think ah oh, hand lock i'll bring something to deal with that but yes i I'm, i've known trump to play a lot of zoo as well and because it's so strong right now uh, it wouldn't be surprising if he picked it up i mean that imp gang boss has changed so much for that deck just it's it's incredible how one card has changed that deck so much and uh, we've seen a, a variety of Zoo decks as well. I mean, Reynard brought that kind of Sylvanas and uh, the Dr. Boom version at Gfinity, whereas a very popular uh, version is the Sea Giant version, where you run like two Sea Giants and an Echo in Ooze. And Sea Giant has a lot of synergy with stuff like Implosion. So I can see why that's uh, being put in at the moment. 
Yeah, the the M game boss really does open up those of possibilities a little bit more consistently compared to cards like you know Harvest Golem that used to be there in the past. Um, I, I personally think Zoo still could use a couple of tweaking points. There's some awkward draws that happen and it gets punished a little bit. But I really like how it faces off against. I mean, like that was the whole point. Like the reason why Zoo was so strong was because it phased out other aggro decks while still being able to be fast itself. Uh, it's so good at board control with the Argent Squire, de, the Argent Squires, Defender of Argus, the Direwolf Alpha, and uh, then you're able to continue to leverage that point life tapping and being able to outpace like aggro decks or out control aggro decks while being able to take advantage of the board position as well. So well, we'll, we'll wait to see what that Warlock deck's going to bring. Until then, we're going to have good old Mech Warrior up against the uh, Paladin from Trump here. I'm really excited for this deck because I haven't seen anything on it yet. So I want to see what it's capable of. Does it run, uh, run the Warbot? Is that a card he's uh, using? The uh, Warrior uh, class card for the Mechs. Does he run that? Uh... I think so. I mean, I, this deck has actually... I feel like it's been relatively the same, but I always feel like I learned something new. You know, Pilot Sky... Like, when I first saw him win with it, it was like I didn't even see Pilot Sky Golem. The next week I saw it, and then he crushed somebody while having Pilot Sky Golem, like, you know, just continue to push damage to the face. I'll just look at this board, actually. I think this game is almost already... There's no Consecration. There's actually no way to even get past his Annoyatron. And uh, he's going to be taking upwards to t 11 to 13 damage every turn because there's second Anoyotron ready to go. Like, I think Trump's ready to concede. <laughs> yeah, that's true is oh that. Like, what, you'd need equality conse consecrate to deal with that board, but it's too early in the game. It's like turn three and he's got all of that. Look at Life Coach looks really happy with that win. I guess he would be. I mean, that's almost like a repeat of our first game uh, we, when we had uh, <laughs> the aggro shaman just sweet pimping her. So wow. it's... Two mech decks showing us what they can do. I mean, when you get double mech warper with a flood on board like that, it, it happens. Um, I'm I'm just shocked that it's like, just like you said, back to back series game one mech mech him down, and life did it with warrior. He did it with warrior, but he did it with only one warrior card, which is the screw clank junker or screw crank clunker, screw jank clunker, I think. And uh, that was the only Warrior exclusive card. It could have easily been Goblin Blast Mage and destroy your opponent. I actually think that is the fastest game I've ever seen Life Coach play. I, I can't <laughs> think of any others. <laughs> I mean, considering... Uh -oh. uh, well, uh, it looks like um, we're going to just basically reset ourselves. You know, Apologies that we weren't immediately prepared for game two because that one lasted way shorter than our introduction of the series you know we were sitting on there and it was over in about a minute and a half and that's just i can do it um so you know, taking a look at uh how it pans out the warriors out of the way so you just have paladin and mage remaining and i know life coach really likes that mech mage uh, i don't think he likes temple mage nearly as much because he he really favors being able to build a board and cheat the mana curve with those mech warpers there's a, there's a really mixed opinion about Tempo Mage as well. Some players just think it's absolute garbage. And I know players like Powder, for example, he hates that deck. Uh, he, he has been quite uh, verbal about it, whereas some players really like it. Uh, Zosus really likes it. For example, he brought it to Gfinity. Uh, uh, I've played it a lot. H2K, the guys from H2K, Indran, Pesty, Crane, they really like it too. So there's kind of a very mixed feeling about that deck. Whereas I think Mech Mage is just a bit more stable and a bit more tested. And it's got quite a few variants as well. You've got the uh, the Raynad version where you had that Bling Trong and that Harrison, which is really good. And you've got kind of your bog standard Mech Mage. So I think Mech Mage is such a safe choice for Mage at the moment, if you want to play aggro anyway. I think so as well. Although maybe it's being phased out to the metagame. Who knows? This is a good opportunity while we have a few seconds to get ready for our next game. To remind you guys about that upcoming finals, 25K. Make sure to hit the follow button on the channel, twitch.tv slash NVIDIA. Or if you're watching on VOD, again, catch the off, uh, online finals rather at the end of the month there in May. Good stuff all around. The 16 players that are playing here, I believe would be uh, guaranteed to go to the top 32. But what we do is we take 16 players from the amateur division 
uh, who weeded through the entire weeks of Swiss play, I believe. It's 15,000 people, so an unbelievable amount of open participants. And it's just the beginning. I'm assuming that it's going to be even easier to play your matches because it's on mobile. Uh, I'm really excited, and I've been playing way too much Hearthstone recently. I actually need to start cutting back down because my responsibilities with everything else have taken <laughs> taken a, a lower priority, unfortunately. I, I was still in that mode when I was in that tournament. I can understand why, man. Hearthstone's really fun. I've been enjoying it so much recently. I've been surprised at that. A lot of people have said since the mobile version has come out, they just can't stop playing it everywhere. In work, on their lunch break, uh, even when they go to the bathroom. It's just uh, it's, it's, it's great how Blizzard has made the game so accessible. But I guess it's a bit of a curse as well if it, if it uh, steals a lot of your time because it's so easily accessible. We're looking at this life coach and Trump are going to be playing a paladin mirror and see that mind control tech again that we saw from the weekends. He seems to favor that card a lot. Nice little tech card there for life coach and Trump's hands looking a, a little bit clunky. I mean, you might want to keep onto the Harrison Jones. It's a very nice weapon removal can really help with tempo because uh, the paladin relies on that uh, true silver champion so much for its removal. So, but he decides to throw it away and just try and get a nice early curve. The curve is so important. There's one, usually one player that's following the curve and another person responding to it. Personally, I really like going first in most of these kinds of mirrors. I love going first, uh, especially in Paladin vs. Paladin, because you hit the Quartermaster that much quicker. Um, you hit the Shield of Minibot quicker. Assuming your opponent doesn't have the coin to leverage those things. The big muster for battle uh, versus muster for battle, then you know the person that goes first and whacks the minions gets the advantage. Now, on the flip side of it is always the knife jugglers. Like, can you leverage that? Um, are you taking too much damage in response? Uh, these type of things gives Life Coach a really sharp advantage as he starts developing his board here. Do you think we're going to see a coin consecrate here? Or just a shredder? Okay, he plays a bit more patient. Yeah. I mean, maybe he wants him to commit more to the board yet. There's no quartermaster coming just yet. So next turn, we might see a consecrate depending on what uh, comes down here. Because he doesn't have the equality. Do with, hmm. I guess you peacekeeper then, right? There's really nothing. I mean, you just want to develop the three three on the board, reduce that impact of the pilot shredder. Although the pilot shredder would start chopping away at the one ones because you'd be on quartermaster terms. The only other way to deal with this is to play the owl, but that's such a weak use of it. There's Tyrion in uh, the hand of Trump and. That will end up becoming one of those big factors. So I, I think I'm okay with dropping just a Peacekeeper here. Yeah, I agree with you. Peacekeeper is definitely the best play here because it minimizes oh. the power on the board as well for Trump. And he's behind again then. I mean, that's if you want to play Tempo. If you want to play it slow, because Left Coach is playing grindy. I'm sure he's playing Kale Design and whatnot. Uh, he could also opt to go for Accolade of Pain after he kills off this Pilot Shredder. And if it's like a two attack or less, you can just simply drop that. Yeah. Oh, yeah okay. So Acolyte of Pain is it's more consistent with how Life Coach has played his deck because he has such like late game cards that uh he could take his time. Well shoot silver's gonna go on that. You don't want him you don't want life coach drawing anything really if you can avoid it because he, like you said, he just grinds the game out, gets loads of excellent options, and he just outvalues you with his options. And I assume that Trump's going to probably be playing more of a mid rangey Paladin, whereas Life Coach will play that more control orientated Paladin. And we did see two Equalities in one of his decks before. So if you if you see two Equalities packed in a, a Paladin, you most likely assume it's control because you don't have the room in mid, mid Paladin for it. The two equalities always just feels clunky, man. I, I used to really believe that qualities were so core to uh, to Paladin, but now it's like I'm not exactly sure anymore, man. I think like having two equalities, if you have them stuck in your hand, it's like having two lay on hands, or you know, it's like when do you get a chance to use both of them effectively without hoping that's another card? Um, not to mention that Paladin's gotten so good at tempo that equality is not really needed sometimes to do damage onto the board. The quartermasters and everything else uh, is sometimes adequate. Um, Life coach again stuck in a pretty interesting spot where he could develop something to just get board presence, or he can take it slow. Big game hunter comes down, 
just because there's really nothing else and he starts to contest almost everything else that comes out here like sludge belcher he just doesn't want to like preemptively set up a chew silver it's off curve harrison uh definitely agree with this another thing to consider as well life coach is known to run two bghs in his decks it's not uncommon so he could be packing another one he could and the thing with paladin unless you're putting some interesting things in like rag or whatever it's only dr boom it's gonna hit so maybe he's not that maybe he values this early game more over say sniping a dr boom later but we see a forest on drop straight after the consecrate so trump might have a bit of an issue dealing with this unless he gets some lucky knives yeah man now, now his opponent was able to grab the first doors in, and there's still even a way to properly deal with it other than trying to get this juggle or silencing it and even then, both options are still not exactly the most guaranteed thing. And you don't want to give him a 5-5. Five five oh, he misses. That's oh, really go. rough. Oh, oh, he misses again. He needs Ardu to look good knife juggler. Mm -hmm. Ardu like, has some incredible knife juggling this weekend. Maybe Trump uh, should take a page from his book. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well... I guess this is an opportunity to use consecration. Is it? But do you have to? I mean, he's gonna. It's an easy dunk on these three uh, minions on board, and you can develop knife juggle and hero power. Just one of those things where you always have to consider how much you can leverage that in the future. Like if he had a knife juggler and he used the juggle preemptively, he'd almost be able to guarantee clear board with just that plus the the light's justice. So it's always worth evaluating. I think. Uh, in this scenario, though, I think Life Coach just wants to keep his health high on the Thorazin out of True Silver range and just keep putting on pressure because the big thing now is, not again, it's not necessarily that Thorazin's reducing costs. It's that it's a 5-5 five, five body. a really big deal. And it's already had two attacks so far, and he still hasn't been able to deal with it. I, I think the Consecrate was good there because it was just, a, like I said, a cheap way to get rid of all the minions, develop more of a board yourself, and this Forest Sun's just going to keep hitting away. I mean, he's gonna he's had to silence it and Alder it, I imagine, that's going to follow. Yeah, so silence and Alder, one card. That's a lot of cards just to deal with a guy you haven't even taken off the board yet. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. The, the Aldor is his best answer to it for now. Lay on hands comes in the hand, though. That's that's really good for life coach. That way you can keep up the steam and and, pre and keep up the pressure um, in terms of winning the actual control match. The alternative is to use True Silver and just start hero powering. That's also pretty good, too, on the because that way he has True Silver set up for whatever happens next turn. Um and then he can lay on hands. So I think developing the True Silver is really impactful. The only awkward thing is that True Silver is supposed to cost four. Hero, is supposed to cost, Hero Power is supposed to cost two. Um, and you're not supposed to be left over with this much mana to play another card. Uh, Thorazen definitely tempts you to overcommit to the board sometimes because everything's so cheap. Oh, he silences. So Thorazen gets oh, another 5-5 five, five attack in. Do you think we're going to see a that Tyrion That is really now? cute, man. I think, we'll, uh, I think we'll see a Harrison here just to get... Uh, I don't know. He, I don't know if he can. I think he might have to just Tyrion here. But it's a good play, well, though. just use silence. Yeah, it's a good play, though, because he's on 12 health. I mean, one of the things Paladin really struggles with sometimes is closing out a win because of their lack of damage. But he's developed such a, a strong board here. I, I think that was a really good idea for him. Right. But uh, this is lethal anyways. A really good job here from Life Coach to figure out every possibility and uh, cornering Trump. And of course, Trump uh, got bullied from the start. He went second, which is already uh, a, a disfavorable position or unfavorable position rather. And from there, Life Coach was able to get muster for battle on three, control the state of the board, um, pretty much line up the proper response. Very good navigation through that matchup. Really enjoyed that Paladin mirror. Yeah, it just shows how strong uh, Life Coach's Paladin is and the game knowledge he has and the understanding of 
how the game is developing, like using that big game hunter for tempo there, using that silence as well there to, to, to go for an extra five damage, knowing that even if a Tyrion did come out, come down or a Sludge Belcher, Sludge Belcher probably would have been a bit more awkward, but a Tyrion, uh, if a Tyrion come down, he had lethal set up. So it just shows how, how life coaches thought process really benefit him and really complement his play style. Yeah, I think uh, the thing about um, Paladin for Life Coach, though, is that it's such a contrast to, like, the type of deck that he's been recently bringing, which has been more, like, uh, you know, like sometimes he's been bringing really aggressive decks, and then he just busts, like, a super controlled deck. And he keeps, he keeps surprising me with some of the things that he really likes. I'm like, well, Life Coach, because, you know, some players like specific styles. Some people like being really aggressive. Some people like being more control-oriented. Tides of Time, for example, being control. Chalky being aggro. Life Coach just seems to like cards that are good that people don't normally consider good, like Pilot Sky Golem or Nourish. Like Those are, those are cards that he's single-handedly make people pay attention to uh, because of his success with it and how he's able to build a deck around it. It's very subtle, too. It's one of those things where it's like, I don't really expect Nourish that good and then you start seeing nourish with emperor thorson and how it draws cards uh still gives him options to gain tempo helps him win druid mirrors which is really popular in the metagame and it's like wow it's actually brilliant with how, how nourish works out um even it, you know it, it's, it's so interesting to see how it pans out it actually shows how intelligent his deck building is like you said i did these little tweaks here and there these cards which he favors and it's it's definitely like you said the nourish for example it it's, it makes a lot of sense you're speeding up forest on you're speeding up your deck more I mean forest on speeds up faster a lot now combine that with nourish nourish and azure drakes it's just super fast and it, it really is a really good skill that life coach has developed through his half turn career making these fine little tweaks to his decks and he really shows like how powerful these these little things are in his in his deck build and in his play. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I mean, that's why it's going to be really difficult. I don't think Trump can defeat this mage deck three times. Uh, the check mark is over the mage, but if you're just tuning in, the Warriors took game number one. It was the Mech Warrior, and Life Coach might have one of the quickest series possible. I'm I'm foreseeing that Trump might just line up his Warlock uh, against Mage deck could be his best option, um, assuming Life Coach is playing Mech Mage, and then. Life Coach could draw double Mech Warper again and just completely run over uh, this whatever Warlock deck it chooses to be from Trump. So here we go. It, it is. It does end up being Mech Mage. It does end up being Handlock, though. It's not, not as we originally anticipated, but it's not so surprising considering that Trump was streaming Handlock as recently as yesterday. This could play to Trump's advantage here. If he can uh, get some big taunts down, get a lot, a, a big ball, which Handlock can develop quite easily when they're on low health or they get good tempo. And uh, it very much comes down to Life Coach having burst available when he needs it because Fireballs and Frostbolts play a big part, not only controlling the board, but sometimes finishing off, say, a Handlock because the anti-kill bots and such just swing things in the Handlock's favor so much. So I think Life Coach is going to need a really good early board and the burst to follow up or he's uh he might uh not win this one yeah the big problem too is like a mirror entity really disincentivizing a turn four play which normally uh, a turn four minion play which could really swing and, and affect the, the way trump want to play um his minions you know of course that's where you drop an Ancient Watcher and you give an Ancient Watch to your opponent and he can't really leverage that unless he has a Rusty Horn with Taunt. Now, Life Coach, interesting spot. Still think that Mad Scientist is the better, but his opponent did pass on turn one and it's worth evaluating if it's like, if it's a hand lock, he can sort of take time because his hand's not that great. He might need that coin. But if it's a zoo, then you'd still want to take advantage of him potentially missing a turn one play. A pass on turn one when your opponent doesn't have the coin, though, still doesn't necessarily mean that he's handlocked. So you have to be really cautious to weigh both options. Yeah, he's just. I think it was good to play patient there. Maybe he had uh, known that Trump was playing in handlock a lot, and he predicted that and decided to use this. He'll utilize this coin a little bit later. 
But yeah, um, having that ancient watcher, if he's if he manages to keep hold of that, it will make those mirror entities less effective, and that owl will as well. Well, so uh, Trump already has two things in his hand to make mirror entities a lot less effective. Man, no, what mech warper off the top here just to fill up the board a little bit. There is Hellfire, and but the most important thing is that there is no mirror entity, so it's an opportunity to drop the Drake now before uh, life could get that down. So, uh, looks like even if mirror entity does come into play, though, there is that zombie chow, and that could be a huge factor considering that. Uh, Trump can get his opponent to copy that, then he can remove it and gain some health back even, which would be really crucial considering his opponent does have cards like Antonitis and a lot of ways to burn his opponent. Yeah, we're not going to see this. Zomb this zombie chair is most certainly going to be used for that reason. And the health gain is going to be big as well because it puts the mech mage out of reach even more than it would be with, say, anti kill bots and belchers and lots of taunts going down on the field. So drawing this card right now, uh, well, already for Mirror Entities, is pretty huge, I think, for this match. Well, I really like developing the Pilot of Sky Golem and just whacking the face. Uh, I guess he is afraid of Shadow Flame, though. Shadow Flame would absolutely destroy him. Um, considering that he could play Zombie Chow right afterwards, too. Oh, right before it, too. So it's, like, worth evaluating, but I think the value on um, the value on the Sky Golem is so high. The fact that, you know, four or four bodies that pop out on average is so useful to keep pressuring the handlock here. He actually goes to get the uh, Mirror Entity on the field now, so Trump is probably going to play the zombie chair now but he needs to figure out how else he wants to utilize his mana because he can he can follow up with a defender of argus as well which could give him a bit of protection from this uh the six four and the, the the drake's health is so high already so it's going to take a few things to punch through it maybe a frostbolt or a fireball and if you see a frostbolt or a fireball flying on a minion uh that's one less burst option the mage is going to have later so the handlock would be pretty happy with that <laughs> well, you know, this is still a really big win in the, in Trump's book, Killing, having that zombie chow. Now, the question is, how do you proceed from here? Do you just hellfire and let your opponent deal with the possibility of uh, frostbolting down the drake? I guess he does go for it. Uh, the nice thing is he does have mortal coil and a silence to deal with that. Um, hmm. Okay, Life Coach has a couple of lines here, too. He can uh, deal with the Drake and then put out a three-mana card. So what can your opponent really do on turn six? I guess Mirror Entity still is kind of weak because of the possibility of an Ancient Watcher. He already played Zombie Channels. So I guess you'd rather have the guarantee of having a mech on board because if you play the Spider Tank, the next turn he might deal with your Pilot Sky Golem. You won't necessarily get the benefits of the Goblin Blast Mage Battle Cry. So I think a spider tank is justified. It's just that mirror entity always can mess up your plans a lot. And uh, it's always nice to have that developed. Yeah, he's probably considering now he's seen the zombie chair. Does he have anything else? I mean, like you said, a watcher is something to consider. An owl is another thing to consider. I think definitely the frostbolt and the spider tank. That's probably the best line of play here. Clears up the board, keeps your 6-1 keeps your alive. And then you throw... Trump in a situation where he has to react, but he just goes for the blast mage. Does he? No. Oh. Yeah, he... That's awkward. <laughs> yeah, it is because now now it's like you know, mortal coil shadow flame could most likely destroy it, or you know he can just pretty much clear the board with however he wants to deal with it. It's like one of these scenarios where he went for a risky play, and it pay off. Uh oh. And I feel like this is an opportunity for Trump to really start marching back. He can play Giants next turn. Um, he has Jaraxxus, so he's got heal. Life Coach is playing uncharacteristically quick, but I think he was definitely not happy and maybe even slightly flustered by what happened there with the Goblin Blast Mage. Yeah, do you think you just play the Belcher here, maybe tap, draw some more options? I mean, you can develop the Giants as well. The Giants fine. 
and tap. So yeah, I think uh, I think life coach is pretty steady here, but I think the the risk of say maybe tapping is is that burst potential that mech can mech mage can throw out, and we do see a fireball on frostbolt in life's coach's hand, so he's going to be thinking about knocking him down here. So he takes him down to eleven. So he's just going all in here. So he is 100% committing to the Fireball and Frostbolt kill on the next turn by the looks of it. I mean, anti-kill bot would definitely swing thing in Trump's favor. But I've, at this point, Life Coach needs to go for the win, I think. Yeah, I suppose that the way this mirror entity would work is that you're, you're expecting your opponent to play a defender of Argus. So if you're expecting defender... You're beginning a two mana or two three. Might be still better just to ping, so that way you have frostbolt, fireball, and ping. Yeah, There's like no you life said, gain in Trump's hand. Yeah, the Argus here and the mirror entity wouldn't have been great. It's not a very high value target for that spell. And like you said, there's no life gain. He's one turn off Jaraxxus as well, which is a bit of a shame for him. I think Trump's probably considering uh, if if you ping face like that, I think you're telegraphing that you could potentially have burst ready to follow up next turn. So does he tap? Do you think you tap here for the anti kill bot to try and survive or? Uh, if I was Trump, I'd taunt up and then I'd shadow flame the the watcher. I, I would play defender of Argus, let him copy it, shadow flame the watcher, attack the face with Sylvanas. Just and oh sorry, and of course develop the molten giant. It seems to be your best course of action. You deal with the board. Um, it's if he can is he going to go for some fancy play of dark bomb? I mean Sylvanas or something. I don't know. Uh, at this stage, we know that Trump's in really bad business here. Oh, I, excuse me. I thought the mirror entity was in play. Well, this uh, yep. this also is okay, but we know that this means it's certain death. Life coach is going to steamroll Trump three zero with two mech. Uh, a paladin that out-tempoed him. Have to feel a little bit bad for uh, for Trump, even though it seemed like uh, he took some really bad, nasty beats. Uh, Life Coach just sometimes had an unstoppable hand and, uh, and, and like, navigated perfectly. There was opportunities for Life Coach in that paladin game, for example, to mess up. There was for him to mess up here, too. Um, and overall, I, I felt like he played well. It just felt Trump was always on the back foot for most of that series and all games. I mean, the first game, you can't really comment on Life Coach when it's so quickly. There was there was no way for Trump to contest. But in that Paladin mirror, Life Coach was always kind of ahead somehow. He always had board or he was always setting up stuff for the next turn. And Trump was kind of playing quite reactive for a while. And then in that situation there, uh, once again, Life Coach had everything he needed to close out the game and it's good he played the ping he decided to ping instead of playing the mirror entity because he committed to the game plan of finishing him that turn regardless if he saw anti kill bot or not he was willing to take the gamble and it paid off for him that's right so uh well done overall and uh life coach now improves his record even more uh trump in the meantime we'll have to get an actual standings check on what's going on but again if you need to check on all the updates go to esports.geforce.com and find out more about this NVIDIA Pro-Am tournament. $25,000 prize pool, 100 world championship points to the winner, which is equivalent of finishing twice uh, in first place for a latter season. Of course, it breaks down from, there, from that point on. Uh, it's not just first place gets points. Second to eighth place, I believe, also gets points. Good stuff all around. His life coach takes down yet another Hearthstone nerd, 3-0. Well done. And uh, that wraps up our second series of the day. I want to remind you guys to also check out all the cool things that are going on with NVIDIA. There's the Shield tablet, which uh, is, you can also play Hearthstone on. You can play Hearthstone pretty much on anything now. I'm pretty sure I'm waiting for the first post where someone can play Hearthstone via a potato and post it on the Reddit forum. That'd be really interesting to see, considering that uh, I've seen weirder stuff done through science. Uh, and I hope you guys are enjoying the broadcast. Uh, what do we have coming up next here, Aquabug? So we have Strifeco versus Taj. So that's going to be a good game. Strifeco has um, actually beat RDU in this tournament so far. So he's already taken out one of his teammates. And uh, so, yeah, let's, let's see if he can do it again, uh, taking out another member of Nahilim. All right. Well, we're going to do that, and we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to have more action here at the NVIDIA Hearthstone program. Don't go anywhere. 
We'll be returning right after this. <laughs> 